Hello and welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, on the test bench today, we have something which is a little bit of, a, of an unusual rifle in a couple of regards uh, today. It is the Remington Vought. Um, and it's unusual in the fact that it has this uh, really chunky bolt action uh, cocking system at the back here. As I'm sure you know, most modern rifles seem to have moved over to a side lever, so that somewhat bucks the trend. And then also, um, unlike just about every other air rifle on sale at the moment, the Remington Vought has an air cylinder that is wrapped around the barrel. So there's no separate cylinder underneath the barrel. There's no air bottle at all. And that obviously gives the rifle that kind of traditional big bore hunting rifle kind of look. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run through the rifle from back to front like we normally do, talk about some of the key features, then we'll zoom in on those key features, and then when it stops raining and blowing again outside, I'll take it down the range and see how it shoots. Now priced at just a penny under £250, the Remington Vought is really great value for money, especially as it's fully regulated, and it also comes with a 3 to 9 by 40 scope. And a, and a pair of mounts, obviously. Now, the thing with the scope is, you know, it's very much an entry-level scope. It'll get you started in the garden or whatever and get you shooting the rifle as soon as you've unpacked it. But if you if you intend shooting more precisely at targets, um, and if you intend hunting or doing pest control with this rifle, you probably will want to put a better scope on there before too long. Now, overall, the rifle measures 1,120 1, millimeters long, and it weighs just over three and a half kilos with the scope on top, which is sort of fairly standard to be perfectly honest. You can get it in this brown wooden stock. It's a stained finish. I don't know what the wood is, but the stain is nicely done. It's very even and, and it looks quite attractive. Or you can get it in a black plastic stock as well. Now at the back, you have a solid rubber butt pad. There's, there's no squishiness to it, but there's no recoil from this because this is being a PCP air rifle. But it, it makes it nice and comfortable in the shoulder. It's quite rigid at the back, so there's lots of good grip in your shoulder too. And it's finished off with a black spacer. Now the stock is completely ambidextrous. There's no cheek piece on the left or the right side of the rifle. And there's no, uh, no not much in the way of a, of a cheek comb either. So. That makes it obviously completely ambidextrous. The shoulder fit is actually very good. The alignment down the, 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 down the rifle is very good as well. And cheek weld is good on this plain butt finish. The pistol grip is actually quite steeply raked. And there's, no, there's not much in the way of embellishments to it. There's no sort of scoops or uh, it doesn't swell that much at all, but it's very comfortable. There are patches of checkering on either side of the, of the pistol grip which are quite tastefully done. Now, forward of that is the, the trigger, the trigger guard. Now, the trigger is a plastic trigger, and I know some people get all upset over that. It doesn't really bother me, to be honest, because there's no movement in it, there's no flex in it at all. Um, now, I couldn't find any means of adjusting this externally, and yeah, it may be possible to adjust it with the stock off or what have, or what have you, but I don't know for sure. But to be honest, out of the box, I found the two stages really, really well set. There's a, a quite a long first stage, comes to a very, very clear, clean stop. And then with just a touch more pressure, the second short stage goes off very, very predictably. So it's actually, it's quite a nice trigger out of the box, especially on a, on a rifle at this price point. Now the, the, the safety catch is within the trigger guard, just up here, as you know, it's not my favorite thing. And it's a tiny little kind of blade up here and you push it forward to make the rifle live and put it back to make the rifle safe again. There's not an awful lot of movement in it um, and at casual glance you'd be hard pressed to tell whether it's on or off to be honest and there's no red dot or anything like that that's exposed. Um, but um, the, tri the, the safety catch is completely manual, it doesn't come on when you cock the rifle or anything like that and you obviously you can reset it once the rifle's been, been cocked. Now at the top, you have this party piece up here. You have this huge, great big chrome bolt. Um, it operates in two stages. So you pull it up, you bring it back for the first stage, and then you pull it back again for the second stage to cock the rifle. 
it operates with a real kind of manly clunk click feel to it and it looks like it should be I know on a Lee Enfield or something and it is a real pleasure to use actually it's very intoxicating that kind of um, cocking action uh, on, on the range as hopefully you'll see when we get down there and uh, the one thing I would say is that once the, the, co the, the bolt is cocked it will move forward and backwards under gravity quite easily so what I did find a couple of times is that if I had the muzzle pointed down and I was loading a magazine the bolt and the probe would fall forward and would get in the way of the magazine but yeah just hold it on the level and, and you should be fine the magazine itself is uh, in 2.2 caliber which is what this is it takes nine shots and it's actually although it's plastic it's actually quite a nice magazine it's a cassette type magazine and we'll show you how that loads how, how that uh, how, how that loads and how that installs into the breech and it, it comes in and out of the breech from the left hand side you get a couple of dovetail rails on the top here to take a scope they're not the longest rails in the world but i don't think you'd have any problems mounting a scope on it too perfectly honest and the magazine does sit ever so slightly proud of the action so you want to make sure that you get mounts that will clear this this magazine but in all honesty i don't think it will be a problem at all now on the underside you have a uh, picatinny accessory accessory rail down here in between is the um, the fill pressure gauge and then you have a second gauge back here where are we back here which tells you the regulator pressure now somewhat frustratingly the gauges measure air pressure in PSI as opposed to bar, you know what we're used to. And the maximum fill pressure is, or recommended fill pressure, is 190 bar or 2750 PSI. And there's no real marking on the underside of the, uh, of, of the gauge to tell you, you know, when you've reached that, um, that 190 bar or 2750 PSI upper limit. So my suggestion is, you know, just get it clear in your head what PSI you need to be filling to or put some kind of marker on that 190 bar limit or probably more, more simple, simpler still is to just fill up using the gauge on your dive bottle or your regulator which generally speaking is what I recommend people do anyway to be honest. Now as I said before the air supply is stored in a cylinder that surrounds the barrel and it's not the first rifle to do that, but there's not many out there. And it definitely gives the Remington Vault this kind of big bore, center fire, sporting rifle look, especially with this huge bolt as well. So aesthetically, you know, that's definitely the, the look that it's going for. Now to fill the rifle, you'll need to undo this cap at the front here. It just unscrews to reveal the, uh, the fill port underneath here. And obviously you put the fill probe in there and give that a fill and then you'll also notice that there's a, a half inch UNF thread um, exposed as well now the rifle is actually quite quiet thanks to some baffles in in the the main barrel here but it's definitely quieter with a silencer now the one thing i would say is that if you choose to put a silencer on then obviously you can't fit this you can't refit this cap and that will mean that you'll get a little bit of a gap and the fill port will be exposed all the time unless you get some kind of aftermarket bung or something. So I think that's all the key points on the Remington Vought. Uh, we'll take a little look around the rifle in closer up detail now, and then we'll look at that bolt um, in a bit more detail, as well as the magazine loading and inserting process and the fill port as well. So the magazine is all plastic but it's a really nicely designed magazine actually it's this sort of cartridge style and the plastic clear plastic um, faceplate is the the back of the magazine and the side that you want to insert the pellets into and on the top here you'll see there's a 
a wheel that just rotates that that center drum around now there's no need to pre-rotate this drum at all or anything like that and loading is simply a case of taking a pellet dropping it into the hole in that face plate pushing it down rotating that drum anti-clockwise dropping another pellet in and rotating it around now the the face plate that inner drum won't go anywhere if, if you're to if you're to lose grip on that drum it'll just slip back to the last pellet that you put in so just keep rotating it round just make sure you push the pellets right down into the the chambers so that you don't damage them as you rotate the drum and say this is a, a, a 2-2 rifle so it takes uh, nine pellets let's keep popping them in and then obviously you're finished when you've loaded all the chambers Next we'll show you how to insert it into the breech. Now the magazine is really easy to insert into the breech. I've taken all the pellets out obviously for safety reasons. But this clear uh, plate here is the back of the magazine and that's what faces you as you look down the rifle. And then the other side, this black side, is the front of the magazine. And hopefully you can see there's a little slot here. And that slots around the pellet probe in the magazine. So what you're going to want to do is pull the bolt back all the way. And then take the magazine with, with that slot there at the front and the faceplate back towards you. Just locate it into the breech. Now it goes in really, really easily. And you could be mistaken, as I was, for thinking that job's done. But the breech, the, the, the bolt won't go forward. And what you have to do is you just have to push this back another little, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so until it clicks. And then it's properly home. And then the bolt will go forward and down and you're ready to go. Filling the Remington Vought with air is, is quite straightforward. Hopefully you can see on the end there, the fill probe, let's come a bit closer. The fill probe is machined to fit directly to one of these kind of quick fit attachments that are fairly standard. So there's no additional um, adapter that you need to buy. It just snaps straight into one of these, uh, these quick fit connectors and then it's simply a case of undoing the, the cap here on the end and placing that probe into, uh, into the port and filling to 190 bar. Now one thing I did find was that the gauges on the rifle weren't particularly accurate. Even with a 190 bar fill measured from my compressor, the gauge was showing about uh, 2000 PSI, which is considerably below 190 bar and the regulator gauge was showing about 500 psi which i think is around about 38 bar so that that seems to me to be very very low indeed so i suspect the gauges aren't quite up to snuff when it gives when it comes to giving you an accurate assessment so better off as always to be honest to go by the gauge on your compressor or your air bottle and then once you finish filling up obviously pull out that probe and return that cap well that's a quick rundown on the remington vort Next stage is to take it down to Renning Air Target Shooting Club and see how it shoots. Well, I'm down again at Reading Air Target Shooting Club. Brought with me the Remington Vought to see how it shoots. Now, I have spent a little bit of time on the range already with this rifle, and I have found that these Rangemaster Sovereign pellets in 22 caliber seem to go around about the best. But I've, I've put a target out at 30 meters, so let's see how we get on. You'll never get tired of pulling that side, that bolt.
it does require quite a firm hand to make sure that you've properly cocked the bolt but it is intoxicating to use it really is Lost count of how many shots I've taken now. <laughs> Got a feeling that was the last one. Guys. Well, that's all nine shots downrange at 30 meters. Let's go and see what the grouping was like. Didn't look too bad from here. Oh, yeah. Now, that is not bad at all. That's nine pellets within easily within a 10 pence piece, thumbnail size, anyway. Um, at 30 meters using Rangemaster Sovereign pellets. Well, there you have it. That is the Remington Vought, £449.99. Includes a free scope, which actually, I have to say, was better than I thought, to be honest. Certainly at shorter distances. Um, nice and accurate, fully regulated as well. Has this absolutely delightful man-sized bolt action to it as well. Yeah, a really nice, great sort of introductory PCP rifle. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, then subscribe as well. And don't forget to check out the website, alphamilitaria.com, where you'll find a whole bunch of articles and stories on a, on a whole range of air gunning topics. Thanks for watching.